Howdy folks, I finally did it. I did it, yes, it works. I have 3D, this is the biggest 3D print I have ever made and it works, all right. Let me show it to you. Yeah, so we're over here at the Craftsman Table Saw and you know, what I did was, uh, what I ended up with is a, almost a zero clearance throat plate but I can also do my 45 degree angles with this particular plate that I finished up with. This was the final uh, print, which I'll show it to you, but I uh, did a plywood job. Also, this is a third party one, which I really wasn't too happy with. Uh, then I created one out of, started thinking 3D prints. So of course, if you watch the show, you'll know that I made this one to prove concept that we could get the size and the dimensions correct that we could make a proper plate. Now, the next plate I made, which I guess we'll call the prototype, was this one here. This one's okay. It's it's not a, you know, it's not a total failure or whatever. It's not usable, of course, because it doesn't have a lock back here. And also, uh, it doesn't allow me to go 45 or anything. It's still a nice zero clearance, but it's not really safe. So this will not ever be used. This will end up having to be uh, recycled a little bit in the scrap bin with me. But this one here, I'll take the lock screw out so we can get it out of there. And I'll show you the final uh, pieces of the puzzle here, I guess. And what I did was, let's see if we can get the screw out of there even. Wow, we, there we go. The final piece was this one right back here where I actually put a uh, lock in here. So that goes up underneath here to lock it into place so that it can't flip out of there if the saw blade was to, for some reason, ever catch it. And the other thing I did was I chamfered the back end here with a 45 degree angle, which allows the blade to go over to 45 degrees whenever you're cutting. So the whole thing is totally useful. And of course it locks into the saw like this with the screw. Now there was one other little caveat that was mentioned. Uh, I had a uh, fellow woodworker over looking at it the other day and he had mentioned that this is just a hair below the saw all the way around. And that's kind of like what I want, so I'm happy with that too. If I wanted to bring this up to flush, rather than using screws and adjustments, I could just use a piece of paper on each of the tabs underneath here in the Craftsman saw and shim it up a little bit if I really felt like I needed it. But this is just, look at this, I just spin this blade and of course, you know, like I said, I can lay it over 45 even and I have a zero, a virtually almost a zero clearance on this side. Zero clearance is really cool because uh, when you bring your blade up through and cut like a piece of lumber or something, it gives you it just absolutely tight to the blade right here. And a lot of people really like to have that in their uh, table saw or as a feature or a secondary item. So we're going to keep these pieces, at least these two. And these two here will end up in the, uh, like I said, in the scrap recycle pile for other projects uh, down the road because this is a finished plate. This is absolutely, you know, what I wanted. Plus, I have the file for this. I might put this on Thingiverse. I don't know. It'll only obviously fit saws of this particular model with Craftsman. So that's uh, kind of up in the air. Yeah. Wow, what a what a biggest print that I've ever drawn out and tested, and it absolutely was you know it works. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. Now, before the safety people and the uh, the safety trolls get on me, <laughs> uh, there is a plan in the works that I'm working on to bring the slot back further so that we can fit a riving knife in back here, uh, which will help prevent any chance of kickback. There was a couple of schools of thought that I played around with, uh, just actually printing part of a riving knife back here, but that would only be good for when you're you know, straight shooting through the saw. Uh, when you go to go 45, then the riving knife would become a, a problem. So, uh, which brings about a comment. I'm gonna look for comments on this one. Kickback uh, seems to be a pretty popular uh, trend with uh, table saws for some reason. And if you're cutting 45, I don't know if you could experience kickback. I guess you could maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna ask for comments on that if anybody's ever experienced kickback with while well, cutting a 45 degree angle on a table saw. I think there's uh, just a, just a crazy question, I guess, uh, this morning, thinking about that. But the uh, plan is to bring this back, chamfer it, and put a riving knife back here that will run with the blade. And even when it's 45 over, the riving knife can be on there and still lay over and still be there. And uh, I've 
thought about just printing something, but I think the best thing to do is to install it with the uh, blade uh, assembly down below so the riving knife follows the blade with the blade at all times. And again, and it'll be metal, not uh, plastic like this is. If we reach that point, which I think we will, uh, it'll be version 3.0. Uh, at that point, I'll put the print on Thingiverse for free download STL file and you'll be able to print your own but it'll only of course fit the uh, craftsman the particular craftsman saw this particular uh, make and model so it'll be limited to the I think it's the series 152 the old craftsmen's were what was it 113's were the old craftsman jobs this is a 152 so it's, it's a lot newer uh, it still, I don't know the age of the saw either I think it's around 10 years but I'm just guessing and uh, that that print will give you the extra bit of slot for the riving knife to be in there to be installed and be used with the saw of course because I want ultimately I want you know safety for anybody that wants to use a table saw I don't I don't like the don't like to hear the stories about people getting hurt on these things but uh, yeah there it is it's uh it's about uh, this one here is 13 and 3 8 in length so it's a, if you go on eBay or something you can't even find this particular one it just seems to be non-existent at this point. There are third-party aftermarkets like I have here, but uh, I was checking eBay to see if there was any uh, plates around the original with the saw, and um, I couldn't find any. So decided to go ahead and just print something that would work and give me all the features that I would like to have with the saw. So yeah, I think we're there. Wow, that's uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, it's Thursday. We always give something away on Thursday. Oh, there it is too. The Venlab voltage detector. It's a really, really neat little machine and the laser on it is awesome. It'll, you know, you'll be able to play with your cat for hours. <laughs> yeah. So let's find out who's going to win this thing today. Let's go get some tickets and a bucket or now ah, we'll get the old Texas style. We'll do the cowboy hat thing and uh, we'll draw. Okay. All right. So let's get this out of the way. Somebody's getting this today, and we're going to do the old cowboy hat. This is uh, from a hat company in Houston, Texas. Hmm. They got a lot of nice hats around here. Okay, there's everybody that entered this week. There was quite a few. It was a pretty decent uh, turnout. We're going to stir them up. <laughs> best, whoops, the best we can. Uh, lots of good entries. Oh, man. I should share some of the uh, emails that come in. Just a quick comment here. I don't think it'll it'll probably fall on deaf ears, but uh, we had a couple of people that tried to contact us for business uh, reasons. And if you're going to do that, our business contact email is in the description below with every video made. So you don't look too smart, you know, sending it to a contest, okay? <laughs> Unbelievable. As for the $23 million from a uh, bank account in Nigeria, that one's kind of interesting. I do like that thought. Yeah, there's been a, yeah, we, we get those every week. I guess we all get them. But, uh, I check all the folders to try to make sure everybody has a chance to get something out of here because I just love, you know, the idea of giving stuff away to the viewers, you know. So let's grab a ticky and let's see what we got here. Ha! Huh. Wow. I think this guy got something from me a long time ago as we had a run on Greg's. Yeah. Now, Greg is not the Greg you think it's Greg. No, not you. Not you, Greg. No, no. This is another Greg. No. <laughs> this one is in Marriott, Oklahoma. Yay. Congratulations, Greg, in Marriott, Oklahoma. This is going out to you, buddy. Oh, yeah. And thanks for watching. Always, you know. And now we've got that out of the way for Greg. <laughs> It is am I, this amazes me at times who does get this stuff out of here. I see these names come across the board and I'm like, oh, maybe Chris or maybe, uh, you know, maybe this week Terry or maybe John will get something this week. And I'm like, no, it's, it's always the, the person you don't think it could possibly be. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's line up for next Thursday. What are we giving away? What's the prize? Let's, let's do that right now. I'll get rid of these tickets. So next week, uh, next Thursday, we're giving away to a viewer. Brand new 
from Tessman, the uh, smart digital multimeter that we looked at earlier this week on uh, Monday, I think we reviewed this puppy. And we want a viewer to have one because I think they are, they're inexpensive. They're actually a great price, but they're, they're great. They're just a really nice meter. The, you know, if uh, good old Fred, the neighbor comes over to borrow a meter, like this is the one you want to hand them and say, yeah, here, good luck. You know, <laughs> I've had it, <laughs> but that's what we're giving away. So how do you get in on get the giveaways? Well, you send an email to ctrewards at gmx.com in the subject line. We're going to uh, write just the word uh, smart in the subject line. And uh, in the body of the email, just your name and address like you're doing a postal return or something like that. And open to one entry per household anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of Canadians this time around. Uh, there was a few England, uh, some Greece, uh, just some various countries that popped in there as well. But uh, I used to do... Uh, uh, overseas uh, shipping at one time a little bit, so I'm well aware of customs papers and get it gone kind of thing. But anyways, that's what we're giving away. And hopefully next Thursday, a viewer will get himself a nice one of these. And then I uh, want to thank again, Greg, for watching and entering his name. I want to thank everybody for entering these. Uh, it's just a little bit of extra support to show that somebody's watching the channel and checking out and, you know, hey, Watch something and you know get free stuff. <laughs> How can you go wrong with that, right? Uh, the CNC machine I talked about is here. Can't show it to you or tell you about it until uh, February the 15th. I've unpacked and took a quick look at it and it has, it has the features that I was looking for in a good CNC machine. So the next question of course is price and We'll do some cutting with it. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But we've also got some more machines coming in. And I think some of them are going to be very interesting. One of them is uh, new from last year. And the company has contacted me. And hopefully they're shipping one in so we can take a look at it and do a review. But it offers some features that, that I have not had in here before. So again, you know, whoa, new stuff, innovation, we like. A uh, little pricey, but not really for what it is because it does a lot of work. Uh, what else have I got going on this week? Uh, we've got uh, some more stuff happening in the uh, saws and tool departments. So yeah, it's gonna be cool coming up in the next week. Looking forward to it. Like always guys, have a great weekend and love y'all and I'm gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna say over and out. <laughs>